Hey, Don Pakula here. And in this video, if you ever thought about having your own television show, your video podcast, a basically a television studio in your home or office, so you become a multimedia company, getting your ideas, your products, your solutions out to a wider audience, but not having to spend the 50000 100000 or even hundreds of thousands of dollars to put your own studio together or rent one, I'm going to show you how to put together a three-scene television show in just about 35 to 40 minutes. I'm going to bring in a live audience now, and I'm going to start from a totally blank slate and work each move step by step. So, Helder, what they're going to be able to do when they watch this video is they're going to be able to put together in OBS the three scenes that they need to have in order to have their television show. And right now, uh, you're joining me on Zoom. And what they see and you don't see it, but you'll see in a moment, there is a simulated audience over here to my left, and that is going to represent our, our Zoom window. So what they're seeing is they're seeing a main screen that you're seeing, and they're going to see a simulated Zoom, Zoom window. But because I wanted you to see it, I'm sharing the screen so you can see it here. Any questions you have, you're sitting in for them, and you'll be able to ask as we go. Now, podcast, television show interviews, uh, panels, workshops, these three scenes are critical for all of that stuff. And it's really the foundation of starting to get your message out there on YouTube, on TikTok, in Facebook, um, and then even multiple channels at once utilizing StreamYard, Restream. You've heard all those channels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, and I'm going to start with a brand new scene collection. And what this means is that this is going to be called our TV show. And I'm going to basically reset everything. So, Helda, you can still hear me, right? Thumbs up. Yeah, you can still hear me. But I basically have OBS now reset to there's nothing. There's no scenes. There's no sources. There's no audio. There's nothing here. So the first thing that I need to do is I'm going to go into settings. And I'm going to have the output settings set. 3,500 kbps for a video bitrate, an audio bitrate. I have 128, and all you do if you click on it, if you're at 160, which is the default, you set to 128. Um, I leave the encoder as what it is. Now, I would set your recording path. This is where the videos are going to go. So you would click browse, and you would choose the folder you want. I use videos, OBS, and recordings. It's a folder structure. And that doesn't matter. That could be desktop, could be anywhere. Now, the recording format, I change from MKV to MPEG4. MP4 is what I like to use, a little more forgiving. It gives you a bunch of warnings. Don't worry about that. The next one I want to look at is in our video tab. I'm right now set up to do 720. You can do up to 1080. Um, but whatever you choose to do, have them be the same. If you're going to choose 720 for the base canvas resolution, pick 720 for the output scaled resolution. If they're different, your computer is going to have to work and do that configuration for you, and it's going to be tough. I'm also at 30 frames per second, and part of the reason I do 720, Helder, is it, it doesn't really matter for me. I don't need the 1080. Uh, Zoom is just now accepting 1080, so I, I, I'm, I, there are options where I am upgrading to 1080, uh, but the file size is so much bigger at 1080 than it is at 720. And the, especially you try to go up to 4K and 6K, I mean, all of a sudden you got files that are so huge, you have to condense them to use them anyway. So I find that 720 and 30 frames per second is a very, very high quality production. 1080 at 60 frames per second would be better. You better have a good computer to attempt that um, and the space to store all this stuff. And that's all I worry about in the settings field. So I'm going to hit OK. And now I have this blank screen here. And in the blank screen, I can add any element I want. You'll notice, held there a folder here that I have a couple of videos and I got a couple of logos and just some things that I'm going to add to my show. And I'll go through each one as I go through it. Now, Helder, you also have access to everything here where you'll be able to design your own as well. So the first thing I'm going to do in my scenes, I'm going to right click on the scene and I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call it intro. This will be the introduction to my show. Now, what I want to have in here is I want to have first a, a source. So hit the plus sign in source, and I'm going to add a camera, my camera. So a video capture device. 
and I'm going to name it. I happen to be on the Insta 360 link. Love that camera. That's what I'm on. But if yours right now is a, um, is a Logitech or maybe it's a Brio or maybe whatever it is, I just type something I'm going to know. And this window comes up here and I'm actually going to select, these are all the cameras attached to this particular computer. I'm going to pick the Insta link. And now you're going to notice two things. One, I'm upside down and I'm on a really crappy background. And off to the side here, you see like a phone sticking out. Okay. That, that's how I'm getting the multi-screen angle for this. So what I'm going to do first is I don't need to really change anything here because it popped up. Now, if your camera didn't pop up here or if, if it's not here, that means maybe Zoom's using it, maybe another application's using it, or it's not plugged in right, or a big one held there. If it's plugged into a hub with a bunch of other stuff, sometimes the, that amount of data doesn't come through those hubs. So as long as you see your camera, you're good to go. I'm going to scroll down to where it says D device default on the resolution. And you can leave this here, but I find when you do device default, every time you go to use your camera, it seems like it's in a different spot. So I like to go to custom and I like to actually set the resolution. Now I'm going to set the resolution to match the base canvas. So if you were doing 1080, you'd pick 1080. This camera can do up to 4k, but I'm going to, I'm going to pick 720 to match my base canvas resolution. And then I'm going to hit. Okay. So you see now other than being upside down and the reason, by the way, I'm upside down, hell you'll see this when you watch this recording, notice how this camera comes down and actually hangs on top of the monitor, but it's kind of like right in the middle of the monitor. And the reason it's in the middle of the monitor is because when I have a, a PowerPoint presentation, a slideshow, or if I'm just interviewing somebody one-on-one, -on -one, like I have Helder here, if I put him right behind my camera, I can look at my camera and it looks like I'm looking at him. But fortunately, unfortunately, it also has me presented upside down, which is no big deal in OBS. Cause if I right click on my source and you'll notice my source is outlined in red, it's also here. If I right click on it, I can go to transform, which is right about the middle of all these options. And I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees and boom, just like that. Now I'm upside right now. I want to get rid of the green. I got the green screen, which by the way, is all wrinkled and there's shadows on, doesn't need to be perfect. And I got a green cover on my chair. And I actually, first, I want to get rid of this, this phone that you see. So all I'm going to do, if this represented the edge of your green screen or something that wasn't covered in green, I could literally push and hold the alt key. And as I do that, I can get rid and crop it out. Now look, the default background, remember is black. If I turn this off, that's the default background. So now I want to get rid of the green and I'm going to do that by adding a filter. The filter I'm going to add, I have, when I click on the only source I have my camera, I have the, the settings wheel and I got this box that looks like a, looks like, looks like a shaded box. That's called a filter box. I click on the filter box and I can add audio filters, which I don't need to do. I need an effect filter and the effect filter hit the plus sign. And I'm going to go up to chroma key. Chroma key is a fancy way of saying, get rid of the green. So when I say, okay, on that, I now get this screen and I'm going to slide it over so I can see the settings and I can see the end result. And you'll notice right now, the default isn't terrible, but it also leaves a lot of this gray and I'm outlined in green. And let me go through and show you some of the differences here. The two main ones that do most of the work here are similarity and smoothness. So on similarity, if I bring it all the way down, I don't take anything out, right? There's, there's, there's no green removed. If I go all the way up, it takes out everything. So I'm trying to find the right balance. And the right balance is going to be somewhere between 350 to 500, right? So right now that's too much. See, I'm almost starting to disappear at 500. Here's 350. Well, that's not enough because there's still green. So for me, I'm going to pick right about till I see the green stuff or the background go away. That's 439. I could also do it by piece. So now there's, there's 431. Four, I see a little bit here. So I'm going to bring it back up to about 440. That's good. Now, the other one that I can play with is the smoothness. Similarity does the heavy lifting. Smoothness is like the fine tune. If I go up on smoothness, I almost disappear. If I take it all away, you see, I still have some. So I bring it up just till I like, I like my edge. And I, I'm looking at the edge of myself right here on the screen. And that's, that's actually not bad. I will know more when I put a background behind me. Now, if you saw a little bit of green, see, I see how I have a little bit of green up in my hair, maybe a little bit, not much, but a little bit. The key color spill reduction means how much of this green is still on you. 
And if I go all the way up on key color, I go black and white. So now I have no color whatsoever, which actually could be kind of cool for a show. But if I go to nothing, there's a little bit of green. So I just bring this up just enough until the green goes away. But I still see plenty of color in my skin tone, in my shirt, whatever, whatever I have. And for me, looks like about 70 or 80 looks pretty good. So with this holder, I'm going to now hit close and my background is removed. Now it's just me on the screen. Next thing I want to add is going to be a background. And I have it right here in a folder where I have all of my sources I'm going to need. And I've made this background is just it's an image. In fact, I click on it. You'll see it's an image. It's a little bit blurry on purpose. And when you're on a high, high resolution camera, you will be in, in crystal clear HD. The background will be a little fuzzy. So because I'm not on a $3,000 camera, I'm on a $300 camera. And by the way, this is after testing uh, probably $20,000 worth of webcams. Uh, this camera, this, this Instalink 360 is beautiful. Absolutely love it. Uh, but what I'm going to find is I'm going to need to have a slightly fuzzy background to make it look realistic. So I'm going to grab the background now, drag it and drop it onto my screen. And you'll notice the only thing that I don't like about it is, is it blocked me out, took me out of the picture. Well, this source box now has two sources, has my camera, has my image. My image is on top. This works as layers. What's on top is in front. What's on the bottom is behind. So I need to bring the studio image behind underneath the Instalink and it falls back into place. And I actually tell you what, I don't think we did too bad on the edge. I'm, could I fine tune it a little bit? Sure. But I'm going to think about, I think I'm, I'm good with that. I'm going to leave it about, about like that. That's, that's pretty good. So this is basically the baseline of the intro scene. You're going to, you're going to be the host. Now, I also am going to add an intro video here. And the, you see, I have this thing called intro podcast. It's a video. You can tell because it's got these little, uh, it's got these little video lines on it. I'm going to drag that on here the same way I dragged the image on here. Only difference is I'm going to hit pause right away. And there's two things on this video I need to do. Number one is as I go through this, you'll see. So there's, there's one. You'll see there's going to be green. Right after the, the video part, it goes to green. I want to get rid of this green. So just like I did in the with the camera, I'm going to hit with the intro podcast video highlighted. I'm going to hit the filter box, hit plus, add a chroma key. Now, there really is no messing with it because it's such a it's such a clean green, right? I mean, it's just there's it's not a green screen. There's no lighting. So you tend to you don't have to mess with any of this. It's perfect. It's cut out exactly the way I want. So now I'm going to slide OBS over just a little bit. So I'm looking more straight at the camera and show you what it looks like. Now, when you go to this scene, and this video starts to play. So when the video first plays, you see, this is probably about eight or 10 seconds of me or of an intro of me. And what happens is short when, as soon as this is done, it's going to now fade away and I'm going to be there. And then the lower third comes in with my name. So now I would introduce my show. Today on the show, we have a special guest. We're going to talk about A, B, and C. You're going to be able to do X, Y, and Z. Let me bring them in now. So this is the first, the first scene to your, to your show. Now, to make the next scene, I'm actually going to start by duplicating this scene. There's no sense. Once I have this all done, there's no sense mucking with it and doing anything else. I don't need to start from scratch. I'm going to do right-click on intro, and I'm going to go to duplicate. And I'm going to call the second scene the interview scene. Now, now that I have interview, I don't want to have the intro video. And while I could just hit the eyeball and turn it off, I'm actually going to get rid of it because I'm going to replace it with a different video. So now I'm just back to me, but I need to bring in that audience first. And when I bring in the audience, I have to make room. So I'm actually going to take my image and I'm going to shrink myself down a little bit and put me over in the lower left side. Now, the reason I'm doing the lower left side is because when I look to my left towards the, where the audience will be right now, the simulated audience, I'm looking left on the screen. If my monitor was to the right, I, all I would do, my second monitor, all I would do is I'd move myself to the right. So any, either way you do this, you need to be looking towards the middle of the screen when you go to set this up. But now I want to bring in this other screen that has my simulated Zoom audience right now. So I'm at the plus sign. And I'm going to bring in a display capture and a display capture means basically a monitor. And I'm going to call this the zoom monitor. This is where I'm going to have zoom on. 
I have to go from capture method from automatic to Windows 10 and up. Now, if you're on a, if you're on a Mac, it's a Mac OS, OS screen capture. It'll walk through the same stuff. And I can pick what monitor I want. And I want, that's actually the right one. So I'm going to hit OK. And now I need to make it smaller. So I just grab any of these squares and I can shrink it down, let go, grab it in the middle, and I can position it anywhere I want. Now, I always recommend that you have the um, uh, participants and the chat on. So we would crop out the participants in the chat. We crop out the bottom. We don't need to see. We could probably crop out a little bit of the side and maybe I don't need to see the top, right? So we crop it out. So we have exactly what we want to show. And I'm going to set this kind of right on my shoulder. And then I'm going to expand it until it covers most of the screen. In fact, I do a little bit more cropping because the green actually counts. There we go. So now just like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it, because see, I, I, I don't want to disappear behind it like this. That's no good. I'm going to drag it down the zoom monitor both between the Insta link and the background. So now it falls behind me, but it's actually, but it's in front of the background. So this would be a panel, it'd be a workshop, be an interview. Um, and by the way, Helder, if it, if it was you here, I would have you on the screen and I would just have you pinned and you'd be good to go. But again, I'm simulating it with, with, with the group audience. So now what I'm going to have is I'm going to add two things. I'm going to add a lower third. And that lower third held is the thing that come across the bottom of the screen that tells you your name, their name. I have it sitting right here. I'm going to grab it, drag it, and drop it onto the screen. I need to shrink it down because it's a bigger production. So I grab the upper left, shrink it down, let it go. Then I can drag it back. And you'll notice it already has that lower third look. Um, but I need to, I'm going to pause the video because it is a video. I'm going to add the same filter as before in the effect filter, add the chroma key and hit okay. And now just like that, there we go. So now, but I'll tell you what, this actually is too big. I feel like I'm at the kid's table, right? All I got here is my neck. So all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shrink it down a little bit and bring it down a little bit so I can move it wherever I want. Hell, do you see that? So it sits neatly right here. Now, because I don't know one day whether I'm going to interview, interview you, I'm going to interview someone else next week or tomorrow. I want it really easy to change the names. So to make it easy to change the names, I'm going to add a, I'm going to add text right here. I hit the plus sign in the sources. I add text and I'm going to call this a uh, guest name. And what I'm going to be able to do with this source now is type in here. First, I'll type my own name. And then Helder, I'm going to put your name in here. But one thing I know about Helder, he has a little title, doesn't he? Uh, we're talking about the mentor, right? So if that's the way he he's he's addressed, that's what his audience sees him as. Can I put that in there? Is that okay? Yeah, good. Yeah, okay. Did I spell it right? Sure. Yeah. Good. Okay. Exactly. So now what I want to do, and, I, and by the way, I can actually change the font. I tend to I tend to really like a font for this called. Uh, Garamond, I, I just, I just like the way it, it looks. It's a little, it looks, it's classic. It looks good. I'm going to make it smaller and I'm going to drag it. So it's going to fit into this box. So see how I'm doing this elder. I just, I, first time through, I got to make it small enough to fit into the box. And just about like that, I'm almost there. Not quite. It's still a little too big, but well, now that I bring it in there and I can probably adjust it a little bit more. There we go. Eh, nope. A little bit smaller. There we go. And if I really want to make it fine tune, you see these lines on here, Helder, it says 50, 364. That's measuring the pixels from each side. So I can actually hit my right arrow and move it pixel by pixel. If I, I could also change the color if I wanted to. So if I wanted to make it red, I could make it red. Whatever I want to do, I can do. In fact, I'm going to probably put it back to white because I'll probably be, let's see if how black looks, see if that's a good color. So the, here you take into account your branding color. That actually doesn't look bad right there. Now, Helder, next week, when it's not you, all I have to do is type someone else's name here and they're the one I'm going to interview. So that's the only, only reset I have to do. Everything else is good to go. But what's going to happen, Helder, is this video is playing and at the end of the four minutes, it's going to go away. And we think most interviews, they don't need to be 45 minutes or an hour, but they're typically longer than four minutes, right? So I have to go into properties with that video selected, right? The video background. And all I got to do is click on loop. See how I check loop. Now, after four and a half minutes, it's going to disappear. 
and then come back. So let me let me move this video ahead and show you what that's going to look like. So that's 15. I'll put play. So there it's got about 10 seconds left. And what's going to happen is not to be distracting, but just to give it a little bit of a reset and a little bit of some movement every five minutes or so, it's going to go away right now. And then it's going to come back. That's it. It's just a tiny little bit of movement. So just enough to keep some interest. Uh, you could use a, 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 a picture here, but I like having that little bit of movement for it and we're good to go. Now, Helder, I, I think I've shown you how to do this, um, but this here, I'm going to open this up, this video. This is actually a video of a animated logo. And I want to bring the animated logo in onto my screen. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to close the video out of here. I'll bring, uh, I'll bring the audience back up so that, so that they're here with us. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this animated logo onto the screen as well. I'm going to drop it on the screen. Again, it's huge. I shrink it down to about the size I want. It is a video. So I do have to go back to the, before it ends here, I got to pause it click on properties, click loop. I want it to go over and over and over and over, right? That's loop. And I need to do the same thing with the background on it. So click on it, filter, effect filter, add the chroma key, background's gone. All I have left is, is this. I make it a little bit smaller and I can drag it right into this empty area above me. So I just kind of position it right there. So now my show has branding. It has a background. It has, there it is, it disappears. And then it'll, it'll, it'll come back. So there it goes, disappear. And now it works its way back in. And this comes in from the side. This, that's a satellite for me. Helder, I'll make sure. I, I, and you have this in your download, this doubt, this download for this logo template, but that's, that's a separate, probably a separate video that I'll make for everybody else, but you and I'll be going through that anyway. Um, so now I have my interview scene. And I would interview as, as long as I need, I'd be interviewing the people going back and forth, what, having a conversation. There is another angle that I need to add on here, and that is the outro. What do you do when, when you're done, right? What do you do when you're done with the show? So I'm going to duplicate this interview scene, and I'm going to call this outro. And there's two things I'm going to do here. Number one, there's the outro. Everything's copied, so it looks the same. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the – um, lower third here. I'm going to get rid of that. I don't need that anymore. And I'm going to get rid of our names. We don't need our names anymore. I'll delete that. And now what I'm going to add is I have an outro video here that's designed for me to get people to want to join and be a guest, right? So the idea here is they end the, end the podcast. I want anyone interested in being a guest to reach out to me and email me. Now, you could put anything you want in this video. This could be uh, go to my website, apply. Just be careful with how harsh and how direct you go on, right, on, on what your call to action is here. So I'm going to grab the outro video and drop it in here. Again, it's also huge. So I'm going to shrink it down and bring it back and stretch it just across to here. And I'll probably shrink it down a little bit, maybe about like that. I gotta, I'm going to pause the video click on the filters and add the chroma key. So it goes away as well. There's the chroma key. And so now the only problem is it's tough to read and keep in mind, this is only about a 15 second video, but it's designed to be after the show. Like the idea is that the, the camp, the lights turned off, the, the show's over me and my guests are sitting here probably talking, but I want to, I need to put a little, I need to like mute myself. I need to turn myself down so you can actually read and see the letters that are here in the video. So in sources, I hit the plus sign and I'm going to add a color source about a quarter of the way down and the color source, I'm going to call it a fade out and I'm going to make it a black. So I just pick the colors, select black, hit okay. And now it's, it's also huge and, and, and that's okay. I just need to make it the full screen and I need to put drop it in between probably the outro and everything else. So now you see how, how the outro stands out. Like now the outro, like really stands out and my fade needs to be a little bit bigger, but that's my, my fade needs to be my fade out needs to cover the whole screen. 
So I just need to move it up a little bit. That's all. There's my fade out. So now the fade out though, I want to have a little transparency. I want to tell that we're back there, but like we're obviously off camera. So I'm going to hit the same effect filter on just the black, hit the plus sign and click on color correction. Now under color correction, it's going to give me an option here to play with the opacity and the opacity. If I bring it down, makes it transparent. See all the way transparent, but I want it about like this. So you can obviously tell that the show is still going on, but you can read the words really well. And all this would be held. If this was you and I here, this would be you and I talking as we wrap up the show. We wouldn't actually be talking. We would just act like we'd be talking. So we don't really need to record our voice, but then I'm going to hit close on this. And let me show you how this looks when this video plays. So this video plays and, and then, and then we're faded out. So we're going to have the interview scene. Helder, it was great to talk to you. Thank you very much. Look forward to learning set, uh, from reading your book, the one you have launching out, looking for right, whatever you wrap up is. And then, and then we hit, we hit the outro out. We're no, it looks like we're talking, but we're no longer talking. And this comes up. If you'd like to be a guest on powerful connections, e that's the name of your show email Don at Don And this goes for another 10 seconds. And then the show is completely over. Make sense. So that's, that's the basic setup. Now, the only other things that we may want to play with here, we could play with the, uh, with music, as long as it's license free, there's a couple of things that, that we could do, but Helder, I wanted to show every move here of these three main pieces. And you've already invested in an upcoming workshop of mine where you have access to it already, but you're going to be in it as a VIP. And this is where we're going to put, this is what we put together when we do the, uh, the workshop here every month, we're doing this three day challenge where we go into detail on what we just did. So you can design your intro, your outro, your lower third, the name of your show, who you interview. But we also need to make sure that that makes sense in terms of, is that going to be something that can monetize? Is it going to be something that you have multiple streams of revenue, like sponsorship, like commercials, like advertising, all the ways the media makes money. Not only do you need to get yourself out there, your products, your solutions, your services, but also need to get you out there in a monetizing stance from your show early on Helder. It's about borrowing other people's audiences, right? Let's be honest. It's about getting you exposed to as many people as possible in order to be on those podcasts with tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of followers. They need to see that, you know what you're doing. They need to see you as the host of a show and someone who gets interviewed on shows. What a great way to do this. You take snippets, highlights, we show you how to put it together. And then we generate those multiple streams of revenue so that you are all set to go. So this is going on every month. I'll put the link to that in this video as, as they see it. Um, Helder, I want to thank you for being on here again. You're, you're already um, someone who's positioned to join VIP. We, we've been working on a few things, but I think this, this is something you're excited about because you think, you know, it'll make a difference to getting your message out there as well. Right. Yeah, I'm very excited, Don. Thank you so much. Like this makes all the sense, and I really, really need that. I needed that. Yeah, very cool. just to, you know, just to, to try to fine tune, you know, and it really works. Yeah, love it. So, so Helder, thanks, thanks for joining me on this. Really appreciate, appreciate you having you here. Um, now, now I'm, I'm going to end the video, video here. The, 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 the recording. recording.